Hey everyone, it's Haleni here and I am so excited to be partnering with Cricut today to show you all how to make a super easy printed hair bow using the Cricut Maker 3. I'm super excited to be trying the Cricut Maker 3 because it is Cricut's most powerful cutting machine so far. It can cut up to 3.6 meters long. It has 13 compatible tools that you can swap in and out, and it can cut over 300 different materials from vinyl to cardboard to balsa wood and even fabric. So in this video, I want to show you some techniques you can use to create your own printed fabric and then use that to make a romantic hair bow. So let's get started. So what we're going to be making together is a hair bow that kind of looks something like this at the end. And what you're going to need are a couple of things. So the first is some leftover scrap fabric enough to make the bow. You're going to need a hair tie. You're also going to need some iron on. And today I'm going to be using the Cricut Maker 3, a sewing machine, and also the Cricut Easy Press. I'm gonna start by tying my hair back so we get down to business. The first part of this DIY is making the printed fabric, which I'm going to cut out a really cute shape using the Cricut Maker 3, and then I'm going to basically print it onto my fabric here. I'm gonna be using the Cricut app on my phone, although my phone is running out of battery. So one of the great things is that I can actually charge my phone from the Cricut machine as well. So now that I'm plugged in, I'm going to open up the Cricut machine. Isn't that so nice how it just like opens? I'm going to click the power button and it is switching on. Now what I'm going to do is go on the Cricut app on my phone and then connect to my machine using Bluetooth. What I'm gonna do is hit new project and I'm going to hit upload and then upload my image. So here is the image that I actually wanna use. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna hit next and then I'm gonna hit next again and now I've got this cut outline for the puppy and I'm gonna call it Terrier. And then I'm going to hit save. Now I can throw it into my canvas. I think how large I'm going to make them is maybe like a centimeter. Let's see how big that is. Oh, that's so tiny. And what I'm going to do next is hit make it. And in this case, because I am using the smart iron on, I can actually just feed it straight into the machine without using a grip mat. So I am going to say without mat and hit next. I will actually select to mirror it because it is an iron on. So make sure that you do mirror your iron ons. Then I'm going to hit next again. It's going to ask me for an accessory to connect to via Bluetooth. It's connected there, so I'm gonna tap. And then here I'm going to search for the, what is it called? Smart Iron On, the first one. And now it's ready for me to actually load. Now, what we're gonna do is feed this paper through the Cricut Maker 3 and it's going to load up. And then I'm going to hit the load button. Here it's going to measure if I have enough material for what I want to cut and it's confirmed that so I can basically press go. Now that it's done I can press the unload button and it will spit that back out again and I should have all these little puppies now cut out along the row here. So now what I've done is cut the piece of smart iron on out and I'm going to have to weed out the rest of the iron on material that I don't need so that only the cut piece stays on the plastic. And watch this because it is the most satisfying part. So essentially what I'm doing is pulling off this and the little puppy stays. Oh, it's so satisfying. And now I'm gonna do this for the rest of them as well. I've now got all my little pieces that are ready to print onto the fabric. 
So I'm going to pull out the Cricut Easy Press and print them onto my cotton. So what I'm going to do here is turn my Cricut Easy Press on. I am going to let it warm up for a little bit and I'm going to prepare my fabric. And I'm just going to start laying this pattern as evenly as I can across the fabric. Chuck my Easy Press on here. Press go. Flip it over as well. And press the other side. And look at that, isn't it so cute? I've got a fabric and you can start to see that there's this little puppy pattern on it, which I think is so cute. Basically take this fabric now and cut out the pieces that we need to make this super easy hair bow. So we're actually going to need three pieces for this DIY. One is the main bow piece. The second is the bow tail. And then lastly, we're also going to need a little small piece that ties the two of them together. Today, I'm actually going to use the Cricut Maker 3 to show you that the machine can cut fabric in really clean lines as well, which is super exciting for me because I do so much sewing. The first piece that I'm going to cut out is the bow body, which is going to be 20 centimeters by 18 centimeters. So I'm going to go back into my Cricut app. And now what I'm going to do is insert a square shape and edit it so that it is 18 by 20 centimeters. The second piece that I'm going to cut out at the same time is this small middle piece. So I'm going to insert another uh, square in here. I'm going to make it 12 centimeters by eight centimeters. So those are now two of the pieces we need. I am going to hit make it. And because I am using a fabric piece, I am actually going to have to put it onto a Cricut grip mat uh, in order for it to be supported through the machine. And I know you may be thinking, all you need to do is cut some rectangles. So by all means, you can use scissors. I just want to show the use of the fabric cutter today. And keep in mind that what you can do with this machine is not just cut squares, but also a lot more advanced shapes that you tend to use for maybe quilting or embellishments. And now you can see here that my machine is going to cut out two of those square pieces. In this case, again, I need to change back to my rotary blade. So in order to change that around, I'm just going to remove the regular blade and then I'm going to fit the rotary blade where the cogs kind of come together and I'm going to clamp that in. I am going to go through the materials and find fabric. And this is a medium fabric, which is cotton, and then it's ready to load in. Alrighty, and now it's ready to go. So I'm just gonna hit go. Now that that's done, I'm going to hit unload and you can see that this has been cut out into the shapes that I needed. Now the third piece is really interesting because it's actually a longer tail and the fabric itself that I need is going to be longer than this board, which makes it a little bit finicky. So I'm going to show you how you can cut a longer piece. In this case, what I'm actually going to do instead is draw half of the rectangle. And I'm going to start by drawing a line and I'm going to make this 25 centimeters because that's half of the length that I want my tail to be. I'm going to then duplicate this line for the other side and then I'm going to duplicate it one more time, flip it to 90 degrees and then I am going to make this actually 20 centimeters which is the width that I need for my tail. Now I'm going to hit make it and I'm going to use the same mat and I am going to select the same material. And then I'm going to fit this onto the mat. So in this case, I can chuck this in here and then we're going to hit go. And now here is the slightly finicky part which is I am going to peel this off, but I can see a faint outline of where the blade just cut on the mat, pull uh, it towards me to where it cut up to and try to match that point to where it initially cut uh, on this mat. 
When it comes to how my outline was drawn in the app, I'm going to pull that top piece and basically move it to the bottom. All done. So it should come right off just like that. Oh, I've got a little thread here. All right, now that we have all the pieces that we need, which is just these three, we are ready to sew. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is take this main bow body and fold it in half. Uh, so fold it in half the 18 centimeters way. So the good sides are facing. And essentially what we're gonna do is just sew a line across and around this entire piece leaving a probably like five centimeter gap in the middle here. Once we've got that, we're just going to flip it inside out and you can use a safety pin or something to flip this inside out or you could just use your fingers to kind of push. And that should be what it looks like now on the outside. Then what you can do is just sew on the outside along this small gap to close it off. For the tail piece over here, what you're going to do again is fold it in half. And one tiny difference that we're going to make just before we sew it all together is actually to fold it in half again. And we're just going to snip off a little angle on the edge of these so that the tails are pointed at the ends rather than being flat. And again, what we're going to do is sew around the entire edge. You can curve it at the bottom if you want. And we're going to leave maybe another five centimeter gap in the middle and then flip it around. And again, what I'm going to do is just sew that gap shut on the outside. So now I have two of these pieces, both flip the right way around. Now what I'm going to do next is measure the halfway point of both of these pieces and mark a spot. And then I am going to match up those points with the top piece sitting slightly above the bottom piece. And then I'm going to sew a line to connect these two together. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is essentially pleat these two almost like an accordion. Once they are like this, you can actually just take a hand needle and sew it around a few times to secure it. We are so close, we are almost there. You can see it really starting to take shape already. And what we're going to do next is just take that final piece, again, put the good sides together. And all you have to do this time is sew a straight line right down the lengthways of this. Slip this inside out, so in this case a safety pin may be useful. Take that hair tie that you've got waiting on the side and hold it alongside the bow, so together. And then you will take this middle piece that you've just sewn and pressed and wrap it around both the bow and also the hair tie. Go to your sewing machine for the final time and we're just going to sew this piece shut. So everything is being held together. Once you've done that, you can now snip off this long leftover piece. And then flip that middle piece around so that the right side is facing out again. And there it's done. So you will end up with your very own custom printed hair bow. This one is so cute. I love the print so much. I am super excited to wear it out more. I hope you guys enjoyed following this DIY with me using the Cricut Maker 3 to make an easy DIY hair bow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and can't wait to see all the projects that you decide to make. See you next time. Bye!